In this video, I'm going to take you through a guitar vibrato tutorial. I'm going to teach you how to master vibrato on the guitar in 10 steps. This lesson will go from beginner level through very advanced, but if you're not a beginner, don't skip the early steps because they're going to build on each other for later. Hi, I'm Tom Hess, and today in this guitar lesson on vibrato, I'm going to take you through 10 tips to master your vibrato on guitar. When I started learning how to play lead guitar, I eventually learned how to play fast, but my playing lacked feeling, fire, and passion. It was just kind of stiff and dry. I ended up taking guitar lessons on vibrato, and that did help me a bit, but mastering vibrato was still hard. What I eventually did to develop my vibrato was I modeled it after singers. Sure, I listened to great guitar players who had great vibrato, but I also paid attention to great singers and how they use vibrato, and that helped me a lot to learn how to master vibrato. I've taught thousands of students how to develop really great vibrato, and today, through this step-by-step -step guitar vibrato tutorial, I wanna show you how to do it in 10 steps. Here are those steps. Step number one, your fretting hand position. I'm gonna show you exactly how to hold your fretting hand in order to play thick and wide vibrato on guitar that sounds great every time. Step two the pivot motion and fulcrum point. To play vibrato great, you need power, leverage, and control. I'll show you how to get all three. Step three is gonna be your picking hand position. This vibrato tip is gonna help you make sure that your vibrato is clean. This is a big secret to vibrato that most guitar players don't know, but today you're gonna to learn it. Step four, vibrato depth. This is one of the most important aspects of vibrato and one of the most important parts of this guitar lesson video. I'll show you how to get the right depth with vibrato and more importantly, how to keep that depth consistent. That's another huge tip for mastering vibrato on the guitar. Step five, intonation. Bending the strings each time exactly to the same place each time you do the vibrato and then release the string all the way back down is critical. If you don't get this part right, the vibrato will sound out of tune. I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a few moments. Step six, vibrato speed. Like the vibrato depth and intonation, the speed of the vibrato is important to make it sound awesome. Step seven, the consistency check. This part of the guitar vibrato tutorial is important because it's where we check if the previous steps are being done correctly in order to master your vibrato. Step eight, synchronize the vibrato speed to the song's tempo. This will become a key part of practicing vibrato and I'll show you how to do this later. Step nine, making good musical choices with your vibrato. Of course, you can choose whatever sort of vibrato you like best. I'll show you some of the criteria that the pros use. Step 10, vibrato application. There are many different ways to apply and use vibrato, such as bent note vibrato, or delayed vibrato, or instant vibrato, or rubato vibrato, or what I call life support vibrato. So grab your guitar and let's get started. Step one fretting hand position. In order to get the vibrato to sound good and to be consistent and have power, you need to have a good fretting hand position. Now there's a bunch of different ways that guitar players hold their fretting hand when doing vibrato. I'm gonna show you the way I do it. I do it this way because I think that it has more power, you have more leverage, and you have way more control. So the first thing that I want you to know is that this part of your hand right here, this part is what should be on the guitar, okay? And this is how you're gonna hold your hand to do vibrato, like this. So you can do vibrato like this with just your fingers where this part of your hand doesn't really touch the guitar, but it's a lot harder. And the wider the vibrato is, the harder it will be to do it that way. So my recommendation, keep this part of, the, of your hand on the guitar. Step two, the pivot motion and fulcrum point. What we wanna do here is make sure that after we have our hand in position, that this is the fulcrum point. 
that your hand or your arm swivels on this part of your hand. That's going to give you more leverage and power and control because you're not really moving your fingers to do the vibrato, you're moving your arm. So what I want you to imagine is that you're turning a doorknob with your fretting hand. This is the motion, essentially, for vibrato. It's also the same motion I use for bending strings. So you're just turning a knob. You're either turning a doorknob this way or you're turning it this way. But this is the fulcrum point and you're pivoting off of this point of your hand, twisting your arm like this. Step three, the picking hand position. Most people don't really think that much about what the picking hand is doing when they're applying vibrato. But the picking hand is critically important because this is the hand that you're going to use to make sure that all the other strings, the ones you're not playing, are going to be quiet and clean. So we want this sound. We don't want, we don't want that kind of a sound. So what I do here is when I'm playing a note, right now I'll play a note here on the third string. I'm doing a couple of things with my picking hand. The first thing I'm doing is I'm taking my thumb and I'm laying it on the strings. So if I'm playing string three, then my thumb is resting on strings four, five, and six. So you'll see it's just resting there. And this keeps those strings, strings four, five, and six, totally quiet. Now, what about strings one and two, the strings that are higher than the one I'm playing? We've got to keep them quiet somehow. You can use the back of the finger, back of your index finger on your fretting hand, but in my opinion, that's not quite enough. I want to have something more secure. So I take my middle finger and sometimes my ring finger and I just rest them on strings one, or, one and two. So now you'll see that I've got my thumb on strings four, five, and six. My middle finger is on string two. My third finger is on string one. It's just resting there. And then if you do vibrato on other strings, let's say string two, you'll have to move your hand over, obviously, if you're doing on string four. Again, you move your right hand over, your picking hand, but that is how I keep everything nice and quiet and clean so that the vibrato I'm playing is clear and it sounds good. Step four. Now that we know what the fretting hand position should be and we know where the pivot point and the fulcrum point are, we know how to keep the, string, the other strings quiet, the next step to talk about is vibrato depth. Now, obviously, there are different depths that you can use. You could use a shallow depth, where you only bend the string a little bit, or you could use a wider depth, where the string is being bent more, or even more crazy, where it's bent even, four, even, even more. So the depth is simply the distance that you're bending the string each time that you're doing the vibrato motion it's important that you have a variety of methods, a variety of skills to do vibrato so that the depth isn't always the same from song to song or from note to note, okay? So what I'm gonna, this kind of ties into our next step, which is step five, known as intonation, and four and five kind of go together. Let's talk about step five first. Intonation is simply the note being in tune. Okay, and I'm not talking about tuning your guitar. I'm going to assume you've already tuned your guitar. What I'm talking about is that when you do the vibrato and you bend up, and you bend up again, that every time you re-bend the string, it goes exactly to the same place each time. Okay, we don't want this. That just sounds totally out of control and crazy. Now, if you like that out of control and crazy sound, that's fine. But right now, we're gonna operate under the assumption that you want it to sound more like that, consistent, okay? So, in order to get the intonation right, what we have to do is first make sure that when we bend the string, we bend to the same place every time. You have to listen carefully. Also, it's really important that after you bend the string and you release the bend, so the string goes back down to where it was, back to here, 
You need to release the string all the way back down. And the reason I make a big deal about this is what I see among students is that often they are focusing so much on bending the string that they forget or don't even realize that they're not releasing the string all the way down and that makes everything sound out of tune. So I hear something like this. See, it's inconsistent, it doesn't really sound very good because the intonation is not right. So bend up to the same place every time and then release the string back all the way down every time. Step six, vibrato speed. In order to make your vibrato sound really awesome, we really want to make sure that the speed of the vibrato that you're using is appropriate for the song being played and is consistent. Now, there are times when you can apply vibrato where the speed is not consistent. There are special kinds of vibrato where the speed is variable, but most good sounding vibrato will have a consistent speed and that's the place to start. First, master the consistency of speed first and then we'll talk about, or you can practice other variations. But if you don't master it first and kind of just do whatever, it's gonna kind of sound like whatever, right? So we don't really want that. So you'll notice here that the speed is the same. Every bend is the same distance apart. I'm not doing something crazy like that where sometimes it's faster, sometimes it's slower. All right, so what you want, you want consistent speed. Okay, now the speed doesn't always have to be fast. Sometimes nice and slow sounds better depending upon the context. And I'll leave that for you to decide what you think sounds best in a particular musical situation. But for now, what I'm gonna suggest for you to do is to get a metronome set it to a slow speed and just try and match each bend to the click of the metronome. Cool, and you can move the metronome around to different speeds, but the idea is to be able to match the speed and be consistent with it. That's really important at this stage. Step number seven relates to step number six, and that's called consistency check. We wanna check, or we want you to check, that the depth of the vibrato, the intonation of the vibrato, and the speed of the vibrato is consistent. So I'll show you some different ways on how to check this to verify if you're on the right track or if you've gotten off track somewhere. So as far as checking the speed, the consistency of the speed of the vibrato, we just talked about that where I mentioned get out a metronome, set the metronome to a speed, let's say 100 notes per minute or whatever, and do one bend for every click. You could also double up and do two bends for every click. It doesn't really matter. You could set it where you want, but the point is the metronome will help you to determine if the speed of the vibrato is consistent or not, okay? So that will help you for speed. But what about for the depth? Well, what I'm gonna suggest for you to do is to right now start with half step bends, okay? <laughs> So if I play this note here, this is the eighth fret of the third string. Let's decide that we're going to bend this note to sound like this note, the ninth fret. So what I'm gonna suggest for you to do to practice is you play the ninth fret first, and then go play the eighth fret and bend up into it. And then make sure you release all the way back down. Then play the ninth fret. Then eighth fret. So what I'm doing is I'm alternating between this, just playing the two notes as normal notes, and this. Same two notes, but now by using vibrato. It's really slow, but you get the idea. So we can alternate between doing this. That's a good way to verify that all those bends really are 
the exact same place at a half step. Okay, so we're going to verify or check the consistency of the bend, and that's a great way to do it. Step eight, synchronize your vibrato to the speed or tempo of the song that you're playing. Now, in real life, you don't have to do this. You don't always have to play vibrato where it's always locked into the tempo or to the eighth note or to the eighth note triplet or whatever. You don't have to do that. But it often sounds best to do that. And no matter what you decide to do in real life, it is an excellent, excellent, excellent way to practice vibrato by establishing a tempo over a backing track or a song that you like and match the vibrato to the tempo. Now, let me clarify. When I say to the tempo, I don't necessarily mean to the beat because to the beat might be too slow. So if this is your beat, that'd be a pretty slow vibrato. If you bent a string once for every time that the beat occurred, that's okay, but it's pretty slow. You might want to double up where you're basically doing the vibrato on an eighth note. So it'd be like this. So each one of those claps is now a, bent, a string bend. You could do it with eighth note triplets. So now each one of those is a string bend. The point is you want to find the tempo and then lock in the speed of the vibrato to that tempo, either the quarter note or the eighth note or an eighth note triplet or a sixteenth note or some other division of the beat. When you do that, it's going to tend to make everything lock in and sound better to the song. Step nine, making appropriate musical choices with your vibrato. Now, this section here, this is basically subjective, okay? What I would do and what you are, choose to do might be different. You might like my vibrato, you may not like my vibrato, you might like B.B. King's vibrato or somebody else's vibrato, and that's totally fine. But the point is, that I think that what is going to be useful for you, no matter what style of vibrato that you like, is that some of the principles that we've talked about already are in place. So consistency of depth is one, consistency of speed is another one, and then also the, you know, making sure that the intonation there is correct, all of those things are important. And then on top of that, you have to decide, am I gonna lock into the song or not lock into the song? Am I going to play 16th notes with vibrato? Is that appropriate for the song I'm playing right now? For the, you know, the chord I'm over, what's going on in the song or the solo, is, does that sound best? Or something slower, is that better? Or is this better? Something more subtle. All those choices are up to you, of course, but what, what's, what, what I'm trying to get across to you is to make conscious choices and don't just have one way to do vibrato and then do that for everything and, and go on autopilot. That, that's not probably going to be in your best interest to do that. Okay. So often what the pros do here is they consider the, the depth, the speed. Of course, they're thinking about intonation. They're also trying to match the feel of the mood of the, that aspect of the solo with whatever is trying to be expressed in the song. And if you listen to players with great vibrato, it always tend, they tend to make really good choices over whatever musical context or song uh, they're playing in. And that's what I think you should be focusing on is those elements that we just talked about. Sometimes slow and narrow vibrato is best. Sometimes big, thick and wide vibrato is best. Again, it's subjective to a certain extent, but the elements used are objective elements. All right, you've made it to step number 10, vibrato application. Now I'm gonna go through a few different ways that you can take vibrato and apply it to solos and songs that you wanna play. So the first way, the most common way, is called instant vibrato. You could also call it immediate vibrato. And all that means is that you play a note and then you immediately apply vibrato to the note. So here's an example. So, I played the notes with scale, and then I immediately applied vibrato to the last note of the phrase. So there's another example. Once I got to that note, the last note, I started doing vibrato right away. That's instant vibrato. Now let's talk about another way to apply vibrato, delayed vibrato. Here, what you're going to do is you simply play a note, you hold it, you let it ring out, 
and then you apply vibrato to the note, maybe one or two or three beats later. So here's an example of that. I'll play a series of notes, holding the note out, then I'm playing vibrato. So the vibrato is delayed, it's not instant. So there, I did vib uh, delayed vibrato twice. Delayed, delayed. That was instant vibrato there. Delayed, delayed. You get the idea. So when you alternate between instant vibrato and delayed vibrato, it sounds really cool. The next way to apply vibrato is one of my favorites. It's called bent note vibrato. And here, what we're going to do is we're just going to bend a string and then we're going to apply vibrato. It doesn't matter if the, the vibrato is done instantly or if it's delayed, it's still bent note vibrato. So here's an example of that. So I'm bending the string and applying vibrato. In this case, the vibrato is delayed because I was talking to you. But if you do it instantly, well, that was almost insane. So that's bent note vibrato there. Sounds pretty cool. It's very dramatic to apply vibrato to bent notes. Very, very cool sound. The next way to apply vibrato is through the use of rubato. So I know the two words sound similar, rubato and vibrato, but they are completely different things. So you already know what vibrato is. Well, rubato is the gradually speeding up or slowing down of something in speed. It's a stretching of tempo, all right? So what it means for us when applying to vibrato is you might start off with a vibrato that's slower and then get faster. Might slow down again, etc. So, th in this case, the vibrato speed and and the depth, what I just played, were not consistent. They were variable. But I don't recommend trying this until after you've mastered the other forms of vibrato first. This way, when you use rubato vibrato, it's a choice and doesn't just sound like something that's out of control. Now let's talk about how to practice this. Here's a few tips. Number one, go through the steps in order. Okay, the order here that I laid out for you is not random, it's not arbitrary. This is the order that I use with my students and it helps them develop their vibrato very quickly. Can you master it doing it in some other order? Yes, you can, it's possible, but I believe it will be harder and it will take longer. So if you want it to be easier and take less time, go through it in the order that I gave you. I think you'll find that it's a better way. Which of these steps was most useful to you? Let me know by leaving a comment below. And if you like this video, click on that like button and subscribe to this channel. If you sometimes have problems with any part of your guitar technique, whether it's your picking or your fretting hand or anything else that's technical in nature, and you want a fast and easy way to fix it, I'll show you how in my new Ultimate Sheet Sheet to troubleshoot any guitar technique problem. It's totally free. Just click on the link below to download your copy of the cheat sheet right now.